This is the fifth generation Volkswagen Caddy and this is two thirds of the rear bench, which later I will have to reinstall inside. Will I succeed? Place your bets in the comment section. Volkswagen Caddy is a light commercial vehicle in production since the late 1970s. Depending on the generation, it is based on one of the several VW Group models. Like the previous generation, also this new Volkswagen Caddy is made in Poland. It is supposed to be larger, more modern and more frugal than its predecessor. Let's find out. The new Caddy is now made on the MQB platform, like most current VW range, starting with the Polo Super Mini and going up to the Tiguan crossover and their counterparts in Audi, Seat and Skoda brands. The 5th generation Caddy is the same length like the 4th gen model, but it is slightly wider and the wheelbase is 7 cm longer. Thanks to the longer wheelbase, the rear door is now wider and there is more space inside. The new Caddy is still available in the utility cargo spec, as well as this more family-oriented version. Both come in standard 272.5 cm wheelbase or in the maxi 297 cm extended wheelbase variant. The passenger version, regardless of the wheelbase, can be ordered in 5 or 7-seater configuration. This is a 5-seater with standard wheelbase. This lift-up tailgate can be replaced with asymmetrically split doors. It's worth considering if you need to park close to an obstacle and access the cargo area from the back. On the other hand, if you like road trips and maybe spending some time admiring the scenery, nature, well, then you might want to have a tailgate like this because it'll give you some cover from the rain or sun. The People Carrier version now gets three shopping bag hooks there is also a 12 volt socket. Left side pocket is gone and the one on the right has a detachable guard which seems to be attached rather poorly. I could do a separate video just talking about the cargo area and the caddy but in brief there are two models the cargo and the passenger model and in the cargo the cargo area height is 127 centimeters and in the passenger model is 120 more or less the width in the cargo between the walls is 161 centimeters and 123 between the wheel arches and in the passenger model is about 118 centimeters by the floor now the length in the cargo version is 180 centimeters or 215 centimeters to the divider and in the passenger model it's theoretically 191 centimeters but that's assuming the front passenger seat is slid pushed all the way forwards. In real life, the cargo area length in the passenger caddy with the standard wheelbase is around 100 cm with the second row in place, 130 cm with the second row folded, 165 cm with the second row removed and with the front seat set to my driving position and 260 cm to the dashboard with the front passenger seat folded. But in the end, it's better you arrange a test drive and check for yourself what items you need to carry actually fit inside. Depending on the version and homologation, the Caddy can carry a payload of between 590 and 765 kilograms. And now I'll try putting the seat back in. Wish me luck. The seats are heavy. An adult man should be able to take them out and reinstall them, but I suggest you have at least someone spotting you to get the seat in place correctly before it breaks your back. Getting in the back is easier than in the previous generation. There's still a high sill, but at least the door opening is now much wider. There is also more legroom. Headroom was never an issue, uh, but in the middle the tunnel remained as the Caddy 5 will also be offered with all-wheel drive. Unfortunately, there are no cup holders beside those in the tray tables. At least now the tray tables can be locked in position so you can place something heavier on them, like a laptop. There are two USB-C ports and air vents. You can also order a 230 volt socket. The door pockets are decent size, but be careful not to overfill them as larger items will then scrape on the bodywork when you slide door open. 
on the plus side, the sliding doors as well as the tailgate have the optional electric soft close mechanism, so you don't have to slam them shut. In the front, the big news is the new InnoVision cockpit. We'll talk about it in a moment, but let's start with the positives. The door pockets are big. Also big are the cup holders. There's a good amount of space for your bits and bobs, a phone cubby with USB ports and a 12 volt socket. Storage under the armrest and the glove box are average size. There's also a drawer under the passenger seat. Gone is the shelf above the windscreen. It was hard to access anyway. Also gone is storage in the center of the top of the dash. Instead, there is a shelf in front of the driver, perfect for documents or sunglasses. Unfortunately, this shelf, as well as other cubbies, are finished in hard plastic, so any hard items left inside will rattle. And now for the InfoVision cockpit, which I think is the worst thing that came out of VW since Dieselgate. This is yet another model by Volkswagen in which I dread touching the infotainment system. I get the impression the system was designed against the user. Everything is unnecessarily complicated. You have to click too many times to get anywhere. Everything requires too much searching. I understand that digitalization forces car makers to introduce new interfaces and you can have your favorite settings downloaded in every Volkswagen you log into. But I can't imagine how bad the other proposals must have been that they decided to run with this one. I don't want to say the InnoVision cockpit is all bad, it's mostly bad, but at least now the central display is on top of the dashboard and tilted towards the driver. In the Caddy 4, SatNav was an afterthought added at the bottom of the center stack under the AC knobs. Ah, the knobs. We should cherish our knobs before they wither away. Along with the MQB platform and the InnoVision cockpit, the Caddy now gets new or improved safety systems and driver aids. In the previous gen I complained that there was no lane keeping assist and now there is. There is also improved adaptive cruise control, driver fatigue monitoring system, blind spot monitoring, front collision warning system and the system reminding me to keep in the middle of the lane and keep my hands on the steering wheel. It's based on capacitative sensors. So the system should recognize that my hands are on the steering wheel, even though the steering wheel is not moving. Unfortunately, for some reason, the system likes to warn me and I have to do some sudden moves to get it to shut the, you know what, up. Probably it's a temporary error, which they will fix in a software update, but for the time being, it drives me nuts. Another fault I found is the passenger side mirror. It goes diagonally up, left and down right. I tried forcing it manually, hoping something will click, but it didn't click. I had a similar issue in the ID4, but with the driver side mirror, However, over there it fixed itself with the restart of the car and I didn't get a chance to film it. If you don't want all the InnoVision cockpit goodness, some low-spec versions come with analog instrument cluster and a smaller central display, but then you can't have some of the options which may attracted you to the Caddy in the first place. Enough whinging, let's talk ride and handling. Apparently the steering is now a bit more direct close to the center, so this along with the tweaks to the front suspension should make the Caddy more involving to drive. First of all, this is a delivery van made into a family car, so involvement is not my top priority. And secondly, no, it's not really involving. If not for the InnoVision cockpit, which gives me high blood pressure, I'd probably fall asleep behind the wheel of the Caddy. So maybe there is method in this madness. Big changes were made to the rear suspension, leaf springs were replaced with coils and the solid rear axle is on trailing arms with panhard rod. It's compact, leaving space for the future 4Motion all-wheel drive or CNG tank. There's also going to be a PHEV. 
The new rear suspension helps maintain comfort and agility regardless of the load. And because the rear suspension is compact, the cargo area is wider, as I mentioned earlier. Unfortunately, I didn't have anything sufficiently heavy to transport to give the new rear suspension a proper beating. When driving the car almost empty, I feel the suspension is on the stiff side, so I suspect with heavy load, it's going to be just right. The new Caddy is decently soundproofed. Neither the engine sound nor the wind noise are particularly obtrusive. I can talk with the passenger without raising my voice. I noticed, however, a slight echo when I turned towards my passenger. Uh, perhaps it's my voice bouncing off the optional panoramic roof. The Caddy is currently available with petrol 1.5 TSI or diesel 2.0 TDI engines with power ranging from 75 to 122 horsepower. There is a choice of 6-speed manual transmissions or 7-speed DSG. This is a 122 horsepower diesel with DSG which should use around 5 liters per 100 km combined and that's well within reach. This Caddy can tow up to 1.5 tons. The top speed is 186 km. This I will not test, but I will see how quick it is. VW doesn't provide any official 0 to 100 km per hour figure because who cares? But I'm going to check it anyway. And I got around 11.5 seconds without any load. Prices of the Mark V VW Caddy start at 21,400 euro for the cargo model with a 75 horsepower diesel and a manual transmission. That's with VAT. The passenger combi model starts at 23,657 euro for the 75 horsepower diesel. This is a Move trim 122 horsepower diesel with DSG for around 40,000 euro. Thanks to migrating to the MQB platform, the fifth generation Volkswagen Caddy offers more passenger space and more cargo room. I'm not a fan of the new VW digital interface, but maybe I'll get used to it someday. And maybe new buyers like it. After all, it's customers voting with their wallets that decide whether something is developed or scrapped. And how do you like the new Volkswagen Caddy and the InfoVision infotainment thingy? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time and don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.